Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary. On Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome you to encounter with the truth here on Church of Christ TV. Jesus in the Quran, part 4. In this series, we are examining the claim of the Quran that Jesus Christ is just a prophet. We are taught in Surah 5, I 75, Christ, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger. Mal Masiha, Hibno Miriam Illa Rasul. This is the claim of the Quran about Jesus Christ, that the Jesus of history wasn't the divine incarnate son of God as Christians are teaching. Jesus is not the son of God. Jesus was just a prophet. As Christians, we admit that Jesus was a prophet. Jesus was a king. Jesus was a priest. All this describes his work for our salvation. He's our final high priest. He's our final prophet. He's our final king. But he is more than that. By nature, he is the divine incarnate son of God. Prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6 says, The Messiah will be called Mighty God, El Gibor in Hebrew. And we also told in Gospel according to John, chapter number 1, verse number 1, that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And al He and Hologos. Chai Hologos and Prostantion. Chai Fios and Hologos. So according to Christian theology, Jesus Christ is the divine Son of God. And Prophet Muhammad in, in the 7th century came and contested this teaching of Christianity by saying that Jesus Christ was just a prophet. By name, 25 prophets are mentioned in the Quran as we have shown to you in the previous part, part 1, part 2, part 3. And what we see upon further reading of the Quran is that even though the Quran says he is just a prophet, but when you compare the teachings of the Quran concerning Jesus Christ to that of the other prophet mentioned in the Quran, Jesus stands unique. Jesus stands superior among all the prophets mentioned in the Quran. In the previous episode or part, we have shown to you that in the Quran, Jesus is the only prophet born of a virgin. Jesus is the only prophet called Holy or al Qudus in Arabic. Jesus is the only prophet who is called the Anointed or the Messiah, the al -Masi. Jesus is the only prophet who is called the Word of Allah, Kalimatullahi. Jesus is the only prophet who is called the Spirit of Allah, Ruhullah. Jesus is the only prophet who will be honored in this life and in the next life. Jesus is the only prophet in the Quran who is alive in heaven. Jesus is the only prophet in the Quran who is coming again for judgment. And we also saw that Jesus is the only prophet who is coming to kill the Antichrist. All this testimony from Islamic scriptures are enough to show to any objective seeker that indeed Jesus is more than a prophet. None of the prophets in the Quran are portrayed in this light. Not even Prophet Muhammad, the mentor of Muslims. So in, in today's edition or part, we want to share further evidences with you from the Islamic scriptures that point to the fact that Jesus is more than a prophet. Even though we are told by Muslims that he's just a human messenger. The first evidence I want to show you is that in the Quran, Jesus is the only prophet who created. Jesus is the only prophet in the Quran who created. And what did Jesus create? Join me. As I read Surah 5, Ayah 110, that is Surah Tulmaida, 
I 110. This is what the Quran says about Jesus. Then Allah will say, Oh Jesus, son of Mary, recount my favor to you and to your mother. Behold, I strengthened you with the Holy Spirit so that you did speak to the people in childhood and in maturity. Behold, I taught you the book and the wisdom, the law and the gospel. And behold, you make out of a clay. This is what Allah is saying about Jesus. You make out of a clay. Jesus make out of a clay. The figure of a bird. By my leave. And you breathe into it. And it becomes a bird by my leave. Hallelujah. Jesus, according to this passage of the Quran, created a bird from a clay. You see, we have already learned that according to the Quran, Jesus is the word of God or Allah. Allah. And we saw from Surah 3, Ayah 47, that the word of God creates. The word of God is a creator. Kun fayakun. Be and it is. And over here in Surah Al-Maida, Ayah 110, we are seeing a classic example of how Jesus exercised his creative power. He being the word of God has the power to create because Allah creates by his word. And Jesus is the word of Allah. Jesus created a bird here. Making him a co-creator. Making him a creator. Muslims will say, oh, you see, the passage said that Jesus did that by the help of Allah or by the leave of Allah. We accept that. Jesus in the New Testament said, I can of my own self do nothing. Yes, Jesus did that. But why was Jesus the only prophet who did create? Why was Jesus the only prophet that did this marvelous work? Why didn't God create by himself but he, he, he commanded Jesus to create? In the Gospel according to John, Chapter number one, verse number one, confirms the creatorship of Jesus. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Jesus is the creator according to both the Quran and the Bible. My dear Muslim, you can't compare this person to any other prophet mentioned in the Quran. Jesus Christ is a, is, is a super prophet. He indeed creates a bird, making him a creator. So Jesus created a bird. So who is Jesus? Is he a creator? Jesus created. He alone created in the Quran among the prophets. Muhammad never create, created. Ibrahim never created. Ismail never created. Suleiman never created. Isa, al Isa the anointed. Is Isa the Messiah. Jesus the Messiah was the only figure, prophetic figure in the Quran. Who created, making him a creator, putting him on the same level as Allah is. Jesus is the only person or prophet in the Quran that created. He created a bird. So all the birds that we see in the world were created by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ created a bird. Jesus Christ is a creator. No wonder he's called the word of Allah in the Quran. No wonder he's called the word of God in the Bible. Because we have learned from these two books that God created by his word. And we are taught in both the Bible and the Quran that that word is Jesus. So if the Quran says Jesus created a bird, it shouldn't surprise you. The next truth we learn from Islamic scriptures 
concerning Jesus Christ is that you see in the Quran there is only one woman whose name is mentioned in other words in the Quran no other women is mentioned by name except one there is only one woman whose name is mentioned in the Quran the Quran talks about Adam and his wife but the, the Quran doesn't tell us the name of Adam's wife it is only in the Bible that we see the name of the wife of Adam. That is Eve. In the Quran, we are told Adam and his partner or wife. We are never told the name of Adam's wife. We are never told the name of the mother of Muhammad. We are never told the name of any women. But there is only one woman whose name is mentioned in the Quran. And guess who, who this woman is? Guess who this woman is? This woman is the mother of Jesus. Hallelujah. Surah 3, I have 42. Surah 3, I have 42. This is what the Quran says. Behold, the angels said, O oh Mary, Allah has chosen you and purified you Chosen you above the women of all nations. Hallelujah. Miriam. That's an Arabic name for Mary. Miriam. God has chosen you and purified you. Chosen you above the women of all nations. So in other words, Mary the mother of Jesus is the greatest of all the women in the world. So in the Quran, you never find any other woman name mentioned except this name, except Miriam. He's the only woman mentioned in the Quran. I challenge any Muslim who is contesting this to come out with a name of any other woman apart from Miriam. And I was, we, we, we will stop preaching this thing. And my dear viewer, what does this tell us about Jesus? Why was Mary the only woman whose name is mentioned in the Quran. Why is Mary the only woman chosen above all women in the world? The conclusion is obvious. Mary was going to be the mother of the greatest of all the prophets. Mary was going to be the mother of the greatest person to have ever walked on this earth. And who is this person? Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. My dear Musa, think about this. You have been reading this all days. But perhaps you have not never thought about it in this angle. Why was the mother of uh, Muhammad name not mentioned in the Quran? Why not Amina? Why not Amina? Why is Amina's name not mentioned in the Quran? But Jesus, Jesus' mother. Why is Amina not the one chosen above the women of all nations? But only the mother of Jesus. It's because Mary is going to be the one that God is going to use to bring forth the greatest person among all human beings. And that's Jesus Christ. So the Quranic teaching that Jesus, uh, Mary is the greatest of all, uh, uh, among all women or the greatest of all the women in the world and the one whose name is mentioned in the Quran makes Jesus greatest, the greatest among all the prophets. Think about this deeply. Philosophize on this. Allah has chosen Mary and made him superior among the women of all nations. Why? Because Mary is the mother of the greatest person to have ever walked on this earth, the Lord Jesus Christ. His mother was the only person named by uh, mentioned by name in the Quran. 
justified because Mary is the mother of the greatest person to have ever walked on this life or this earth. The final truth we want to share with you in this part is that according to the Hadith, Jesus, Jesus is the only person Satan could not touch at birth. This is very amazing. This is very, very amazing. And this hadith was narrated by Abu Huraira, one of the faithful Sahabas. Any hadith that come from Abu Huraira is treated with greatest authenticity. This is what Prophet Muhammad said concerning Jesus Christ. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, may peace be upon him, said, when any human being is born, Satan or Shaitan touches him at both sides of the body with his two fingers. Except Jesus, the son of Mary, whom Satan tried to touch but failed, for he touched the placenta cover instead. We see this in Sahih Bukhari, volume 4, book 54. Hadith number 506. Sahih Bukhari is the first authentic Hadith. It is the first among the Sihahu Sita, the authentic collection of life history about Prophet Muhammad, compiled by the rebelled Imam Bukhari. And no Muslim can contest the authenticity of the matin or of the text of this hadith. And what does this hadith tell us? Prophet Muhammad is saying that when any human being is born, immediately the person is born, immediately the baby is born, Shaitan touches the baby with his two fingers at both sides of the, of the body of the baby. But there is only one person that Shaitan couldn't touch. Wow, who is that person? Is the person going to be Muhammad? No. Prophet Muhammad said, except Jesus, that person is Jesus, the son of Mary. Wow. Why only Jesus? Why only Jesus? Because Jesus Christ is unique. Because Jesus Christ is divine. He is from God. He's not like any human being. My brother, think about this. And Muhammad said, Satan tried to touch, but he failed. Wow, Jesus is powerful. My brother, that is why if you become a believer of Jesus Christ, if you become a follower of Jesus Christ, no magic, no divination can work against you once your faith is in, in Jesus alone. Once you are trusting in Jesus alone and faithfully walking in his life, no weapon or machination of the enemy can come near you. Because Jesus is superior. Jesus is the greatest. Satan is even afraid of Jesus. Even as a baby, he couldn't touch him. Just imagine. Satan couldn't touch Jesus even when he was a baby. This is a testimony from your own prophet. We Christians don't have this. We Christians don't believe Satan touches people when they are born. But this is a testimony from, from your own prophet, Muhammad. And you are to accept his sunnah, else you are not a true Muslim. Satan decided to touch Christ, but he failed. And what, what was he able to touch? The placenta cover instead and in the bible we are told that satan came and tempted christ on three occasions three consecutive times we see this in gospel of luke chapter 4 gospel of matthew chapter 4 satan tried all possible means to get jesus sin against god but jesus defeated satan 
And what did Satan do? We read in Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. Then the devil left him. Hallelujah. My dear viewer, my dear Muslim, that evil that is worrying you, that devil that is worrying you, that shaitan, that, 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 that jinn that is tormenting your life day in and day out, there is only one person who can protect you from the power of Satan, and that person is Jesus Christ. Not Ayatul Kursi. You see Muslims, and they have this uh, passage of the Quran, and they, they have made it like a sticker on, on the accounts known as Ayatul Kursi. That if you read this passage, and you have this passage, uh, at wherever you are, Shaitan or Satan can never come near you. My dear Muslim, Satan even knows the scriptures before you were born. Satan is not afraid of Ayatul Kursi or that passage in Surah al bakla where you are told that if you read that passage and you place it anywhere around you, Shaitan can never come near you. Satan knows the scriptures even before they were written. It's only the person of Jesus Christ that if you have, if you have Jesus in you, Satan can never come near you because he was afraid. Satan is afraid of Jesus. Even when he was born, he was never, never able to touch him. He came and tempted him three times and he was defeated by Jesus Christ. Then the devil left him. My dear Muslim, why is Jesus the only person Satan couldn't touch when he was born? Think about this. I know you've been told this. Always in your Juma prayers, every Friday, your Imams preach these sermons to you about Christ, about Jesus, how we Muslims love Jesus. But perhaps you have never thought about this. Just ponder over these truths. And you see that Jesus Christ is not just a prophet. Jesus Christ is special. He's the greatest among all the prophets. And when you come and follow him, no enemy. No demon, no gene can work magic or can work any evil against you. The Christian Apostle John gave us this assurance. Gave this assurance to those that follow Christ, to those that believe in Jesus Christ, to those that are having Jesus Christ in them. Gospel according to John, chapter number 4, verse number 4. This is what we are told. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Hallelujah. You see the provision. You see one of the blessings that you will get, my dear Muslim, if you give your life to Jesus. The Bible says, he who is in you will be greater than he who is in the world. And who is in the world? Satan. No machination of the devil, of Iblis, of Shaitan can work against you if you have Jesus Christ in you. And how can you have Jesus Christ in you? My dear Muslim, how can you have Jesus Christ in you? You can have Jesus Christ in you by trusting in him. By believing in him. And what should we believe about Jesus? I know sometimes you have been told that, you see, we Muslims believe in Jesus Christ even more than you Christians. Because we believe that he's the Almasi. We believe that he was born of a virgin. We believe that he's the word of Allah. We believe he's coming again. So all this thing that we know makes us believers of Jesus Christ. And we even pray the way Jesus Christ prayed. We even uh, wash our feet when we are about to pray. We even um, fast as Jesus also fasted. We name our babies after Jesus. We have so many things about Jesus. We have a whole chapter of the Quran that is named after Jesus, the, uh, after Mary, the mother of Jesus, who loved Maria. So all these things shows that, that we Muslims even believe in Jesus. My dear Muslim, these are not how we believe in Jesus. Just acknowledging this truth or this statement about Jesus doesn't make you a believer of Jesus. Believing in Jesus is a relationship. Believing in Jesus Christ is a relationship. And in the Bible, Jesus taught us how we are to believe in him. Jesus taught us how we are to believe in him. 
He says, if you do not believe that I am he, if you do not believe that I am he, you see this in Gospel according to John, chapter number 8, verse number 24. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. This is what Jesus Christ told the Jewish audience. If you do not believe that I, Jesus, I am he. And what is the he referring to? That he is the son of God. Jesus is the son of God. Who came to die to save I and you from our sins. If you do not believe in this statement about Jesus Christ, the fact that he is the son of God, the fact that he is the lamp of God who died to pay for our sins. Jesus said that to die in your sins. If, if you reject this teaching about Christ, you are not a believer of Jesus Christ. And when you believe in this, you see Jesus Christ as the Savior. You repent from your sins. You repent from your sins. That evil deed that blocks you. You repent. You change your mind. I'm not, I, I will no longer live in this kind of life. Now I want to follow the Messiah. I want to follow the Almasi. That is repentance. Then, you give your life to Jesus Christ finally in baptism. He told this in the gospel according to Mark. Chapter number 16, verse number 16, he says, He who believes, he who believes that I am the Son of God, he who believes that I died to save them from their sins, or him from uh, his or her sins, and is baptized, shall be saved. If you believe and you are baptized, Jesus saves you. I know this message has touched your heart. And you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Call the numbers on your screen. We are ready to help you in baptism. Visit us at the Church of Christ. Wherever you are, you have a Church of Christ in your community. Visit us. And we promise to help you become a true believer of Jesus Christ. A follower of Jesus Christ. And worship God with us. In our congregations, where New Testament Christianity is practiced. Where we preach the gospel. Where we preach nothing but the truth. Where you see the love of Christ. Where New Testament Christianity is beautifully restored and practiced. Maybe you have not visited, you have never visited any, any Christian community before. We in the Church of Christ promise to give you a very great Christian environment where you can worship God in spirit and in truth. Why don't you call the numbers or visit any Church of Christ around you so that you too can become a follower of Jesus Christ and enjoy these blessings one of which is that Satan will never come near you. No demon, no, uh, uh, no um, gene can come near you. We are hoping forward. We are looking forward to seeing you one day in heaven. If not, before. God bless you for watching and bye bye. Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary, on Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary, paved the way by blood that we might wear a bright shining crown. Praise his holy name, salvation has been brought down, oh glory, praise the Lord.